Chris Charlton. For those of you who don't know me, uh, I'm actually a Drupal author. I have at least one book out right now about Drupal. Um, I also do some video stuff and a lot of articles for like Adobe. Um, and in fact, if I have to open code, you guys might see something that I am not going to say what it is. But if I have to open code, I ask that none of you say that you saw it tonight, Adobe related. Uh, why did I bring that up? Because uh, Drupal 7 themes do have a little bit of code involved. Uh, we're not going to be diving into the code, but I might have to open a file if somebody asks me a question and it's worth me opening it. <coughs> CS5. Okay, uh, so Drupal 7 <laughs> themes, part one. So I'm going to do this over for the next couple meetings. I'm going to be breaking it down. Tonight is really oriented at the designers and the kind of, not the top level stuff per se, but kind of the first level of information you need to know about Drupal 7 themes. So if I go too fast, I'm sorry, my slides are uploaded and you can geek out with me after the meeting when everyone's hanging out for the network session at the end. Okay. Um, so the first thing added to Drupal 7, and it's Drupal 7 in general, but it also really affects themes, jQuery 1.4. This is the latest and greatest version of jQuery. It's now built into Drupal 7 core. Also, jQuery UI. So we have a bunch of like cool little sliders and all these fancy kind of carousel things uh, that are involved with the basics of jQuery UI. Um, so expect to see much fancier module administration pages and stuff. Uh, version 1.8 is the latest and greatest out uh, of the big stable branch. So these are added to Drupal. Start is the new Zen. Um, for those that don't know, Zen is a plain white vanilla kind of base theme that you can build your themes on top of. It has a lot of the markup ready for you, a lot of the CSS pretty plain and basic. Um, Start uh, is the new Drupal 7 theme that takes on the stuff that Zen provided as a separate theme and now Stark is the built-in Drupal 7 plain white vanilla theme that you get to build all your, uh, all your themes on top of if you choose to do so. Uh, so again, it's based on the Zen framework and it is new and uh, it, it, it allows you to create CSS only sub-themes. So if you're like, I don't want to touch any PHP, I don't want to touch any templates, I like this two, three column layout. I just want to add my colors and graphics. Start allows you to build right on top of and not have to install anything external from Drupal. Okay, make sense? Uh, the box template file, box.tpl.php is gone. Thank God, finally, it's useless, it's old, it's done for. It is fully removed. Um, the blocks uh, within Drupal now have much more uh, meaningful IDs to them. So in Drupal 6, we had blocks like block hyphen search hyphen zero. Yeah, that means a lot to me. Now it would be uh, block search form. Okay, if that makes sense. Um, for the user login form, the little block, you know, username, password, uh, instead of block user zero, it's now block user login. Tons of these changes have happened. Okay, so every, blo every block that was provided in core has gone through this change. Um, if you, there is a, a link at the end that has uh, like kind of the long ass page of changes from Drupal 6 themes to 7. Um, That's where I found some of this information on. They have the whole list of all the modules and what their IDs have changed to. Okay, so your CSS will have to change. The clear block class is a CSS class that people use to uh, kind of help divs and get a platter, kind of clear left and rights. Uh, now it's called clear fix in Drupal 7. Okay, so that's CSS. Uh, the search box, uh, it's been moved away. Uh, now it's actually a, a standard block that you get to move around. Um, you don't just check a box that says add search to my site, and then it just appears up in the top area somewhere. Uh, now it's actually a block, so you can put it in left, right, footer, wherever it makes sense for you. Uh, right? Yeah. <laughs> I hate that. I, uh, yeah, cheesy. Uh, primary and secondary links are now renamed to main and secondary menu. So as we see in these uh, couple lines of PHP code, uh, instead of primary and secondary underscore links, now it's main underscore menu, secondary underscore menu. Okay, so update your themes accordingly. Unrendered taxonomy links are now unavailable to a node template file. Some people like to use this. It was uh, the PHP variable called taxonomy. Um, a lot of people thought that would give them their taxonomy. It does, but it's kind of unfiltered and it's a security risk to kind of deal with that and manipulate it sometimes. 
So now everyone just sticking with just terms in Drupal 7. Um, terms is available in Drupal 6, okay? but now in 7 only terms is really uh, allowed. The footer message, I don't know if you guys remember, but in your site information administration, you can put a little footer message so people put their copyright info or something like that, and it comes at the really way bottom. But then sometimes it appeared above the footer block, so you, and you're like, how does that happen? Um, so now all that's just kind of pulled out. No more footer message. Um, and in fact, you actually should be overriding or putting a block in the footer region now to handle that type of a message. The help variable has now become an official region. If you're not familiar with theme regions, I definitely recommend you check out my linda.com video training series. It covers regions. But uh, now the help variable is actually still using page TPL, but there's an official region. So if you're setting up themes from scratch, uh, then you should declare this help region. So when you have help text appear for the page or something, uh, this is the region it's going to appear in. And of course, that's the PHP variable it would uh, show up as. Before, there was just a help variable just generally available to page.tpl. Now that it's an official region, uh, we can do some much more fancier things with it. Uh, you can move it around if you really wanted to. Um, another thing is that you wouldn't be expecting your page template to just have a help variable. Uh, since it's a region, you can uh, now start supplying other blocks into that area. So if you really wanted maybe, say, a much more graphical type of help message, uh, then you can have a custom block appear in that region, and it would literally overwrite all that help message if you really wanted it to. So. Mission statement has been removed. Now there's this highlight region. I really think highlight sucks um, <laughs> as a term. Um, and I'll tell everybody the same at DrupalCon. But now there's an official region called highlight. Yay. Um, I mean, you can make as many regions as you want in a Drupal theme. Um, so you could technically have just come up with your own highlight. I actually am just not a fan of the name highlight. I, I'm not a fan of mission statement either. I don't think any of those should exist. But you know, maybe some people will be like, hey, where's mission statement? Oh, it's highlight. Oh, OK. So yeah. Can you carry on these dialogues with yourself off? All day. <laughs> Come on. I do the voices too. Um, <laughs> The content variable in page TPL, um, well, now it's not just the content well area that it would assume, uh, that Drupal can use to assume uh, content will appear in. Now it is a de facto region. So you do need to declare content in your themes. So we see here regions. This is like a theme info file. Uh, I have content. This is used for kind of, um, it, it, it's, it's not to really hinder your theme development practices, but it's supposed to keep a standard. So imagine if somebody downloaded a new free theme, uh, maybe say from Acquia and done by TNT, and a lot of the defaults have content um, uh, in consideration. Well, if your custom theme had everything besides content you know, used for its layout, what happens when somebody switches over to a, a much more generic theme uh, from your content theme? So that's why content is now required, it's mandatory. So if somebody were to change the theme from a really wild custom theme, it would, Drupal would at least know where to put all the main content uh, into a center well. So it, again, it's not to hinder your themes, it is just a requirement and it's really for compatibility, uh, the fact that people can install multiple themes. I think it makes sense, so I'm not gonna bitch about this. So, oh, excuse me, sorry. Don't uh, Are you cool? <laughs> all right, deal's cool everybody, he's fine with it. Okay, uh, closure region now is called page bottom and page top. Um, technically, I think for closure, uh, page top is not needed, but Drupal has this kind of balancing uh, in its names of variables. So because they created page bottom for content, they also figured they needed to have page top. Um, so you have these variables available. Page bottom, again, takes over for closure. For those that don't know what closure is used for, um, how many use like Google Analytics or some kind of like JavaScript at the bottom of the page? Okay, that's usually stuff that's, that doesn't render anything, so it's gotta be at the very, very, very bottom of the page before the body closes. So, close in, uh, you know, page is closing, that's why we had closure. You always had a closure variable that allowed these kind of invisible pieces to shove their code at the bottom. Um, that's why now it's been changed to page bottom, and technically page top had to follow along with this new naming convention. Left and right are no longer left and right by default. Now they are sidebar first and sidebar second. Uh, so Drupal is getting much more 
into um, better semantics, better naming conventions. So people that um, used um, left, I'm sorry, right to left translations of websites uh, that be like uh, Arabic languages, I remember, um, some Middle Eastern, um, and basically left and right didn't make sense to them. Well, it just didn't make sense globally, I should say, I'm sorry. So sidebar first and sidebar second make, make much better sense to a themer. Uh, this is actually going to help a lot of those international sites um, build up from Drupal and not really see any complaints. Carrie, yes? Yeah, basically, you know, sidebar first and sidebar second, if you're right to left, then sidebar first is on, yeah. on the right, you know, it's, it's, it's where it's otherwise we're locked in. Or if you have sidebars right next to each other. Yeah, yeah. Whatever, whatever you want to do in your design, now it's sidebar first, sidebar second, you can make one fatter than the other, it doesn't matter, that's design stuff. Um, the CSS ID is changed also, so it's no longer uh, left, right, um, I think it actually is just sidebar hyphen second, sidebar hyphen first. Um, if I remember, yeah. Um, for blocks, for people who are editing block templates, uh, the block variable is really just an object. So when you wanted to have the content printed out, you had to use this convention. Now, woo, they went with a standard just content variable for the content. Yay, follows every other template in Drupal. 